Unit 1, state the five categories of health hazard. Give an example of each. Chemical, physical, biological, psychosocial, ergonomic. So chemical is fibers, glass, gases, dust, vapors. Physical, noise, heat, radiation. Biological, viruses, parasites, bacteria and funguses. Psychosocial, stress, bullying, workplace violence, substance misuse, ergonomic, workplace layout, reportative processes. Okay, outline some of the main sources of data used to compile occupational ill health statistics. RIDAR 2013, Reporting of Disease and Dangerous Occurrence Regulations. LFS, the Labour Force Survey. THOR, the Health and Occupational Health Reporting Network. Industrial Injury Scheme, Death Certificates, and Internal Sources of Ill Health. Give three examples of occupations where there are likely to be defined fitness to work standards. So vehicle operating, working at heights, working confined spaces, divers, night shift workers, EMTs. Outline the meaning of vocational rehabilitation. It means the process is involved with ensuring that employees with health problems return to or remain at work following a period of ill health. Okay. What is the biopsychosocial model? A model that considers health as more than a case of biological disease. It takes a more holistic approach and includes biological, psychosocial and social aspects and constraints. It looks at contextual factors influencing health. Outline the typical functions of an occupational health service. Pre-employment screening, potential use of questionnaires and exams for general or specific employment purposes. Health surveillance and monitoring, routine checks with specific focus as a result of the presence of identified hazards. Return to work rehabilitation schemes, management of rehab services, sickness and absence management, recording and analyzing data and specific trends, counseling services, external referral optional, risk assessments, involvement in general and specific investigations, health educations and promotions, running campaigns, advice and guidance, treatment services, first aid and vaccinations, uh, involvement in policy and compliance advice. What is the health surveillance a requirement of good practice? There have been identifiable adverse health conditions associated with specific work practices. Valid techniques are available to monitor these factors. Reasonable likelihood that a problem occurs under identified conditions. Surveillance is likely to further help protect employees' health and safety. What is the purpose of carrying out a health needs assessment, HNA? HNAs are carried out to identify occupational health priorities in the workplace so that managers can rectify these issues through proper consultation, planning and resource allocation processes. What is SEQOHS? Safe, Effective, Quality Occupational Health Service is a voluntary assessment and accreditation scheme run by the Faculty of Medicine. It is a set of 50 standards divided into five key areas providers are measured against to ensure their ability to deliver service. Okay, outline the possible functions. So we've done that one, pre-employment screening, return to work assessments, biological monitoring, health surveillance, contribution to health and safety policies, providing specialist input to risk assessment, health education and training, sickness and absence monitoring, keeping health records, managing first aid provision, rehabilitation programs, immunization, drug and alcohol screening, counseling, and audiometry. Right, unit two, identification, assessment, and evaluation of hazardous substances. Describe how oxygen enters the blood screen. Inhaled air passes through the nose or mouth into the nasal cavity and the pharynx. It passes down the trachea, bronchi, and bronchioles into the alveoli. Here it diffuses into the bloodstream into the red blood cells. Identify the main purpose of the circulatory system. The main purpose of the circulatory system is to deliver oxygen to all parts of the body 
remove impurities and waste as well as play a fundamental role in our immune system. What are the three essential components of the circulatory system? The heart, the blood, the blood vessels. What is the function of the retina? When light strikes the retina, it sends electrical impulses down the optic nerve to the brain. Outline what is meant by local effects and systemic effects. Local effects are limited to the area where contact occurred. Systemic effects occur to target organs or systems away or distant from the point of contact. What are the body's natural defenses in the respiratory system? So we've got nasal hair, mucus, ciliae, cough and sneeze reflex, musculatory escalator, inflammatory response, innate immunity. What are three physical states a chemical may be found and give examples? Solid, massive form like dust, fiber or fume, liquid, massive form or mist, gas, gas or vapor. What are the differences between inhalable and respirable fractions of airborne dust? Inhalable relates to the total amount of dust that is capable of entering the nose or mouth. Respirable dust is the fraction of airborne dust capable of penetrating into the alveoli, smaller than 7 mm. What is the UNGHS? It is the United Nations Global Harmonization Standard of Classification and Labels of Chemical and Global Initiative of Standardization. What is meant by the term toxic? A substance that produces serious acute or chronic ill health and even death at very small doses. How is carbon monoxide dangerous to health? It's an asphyxiant gas. When inhaled, it reduces oxygen available to the body. It combines with hemoglobin and prevents oxygen transport in the blood. What is the purpose of risk safety phrases and hazard precautionary statements? Where can they be found? They are to ensure that the user is fully aware and informed of risks and hazard associated with the substances and the necessary precautions to take. They can be found on product labels, SDS safety data sheets and harmonized classification databases. Identify the data that must be included in safety data sheets. Supplier and manufacturer details, composition and ingredients, precautions for first aid, fire, spills and mass release, handling, storage, disposal and containment information, exposure controls and PPE, stability and re reactivity, toxicology and ecological information, regulatory and other information. What factors should be considered when assessing a risk to health? Hazardous properties of the substance, type and level of explosion, duration, frequency, longevity, the task involved, the number of people exposed, the effects of mis mixtures, unusual activities like maintenance and emergencies, relevant OELs, occupational exposure limits, controls and their efficacy, monitoring and surveillance, assessment, review and continual improvement. What specific factors affect risk of individuals, age, under 18s, Sensitization, pregnant or atopic. Explain the difference between case control study and prospective cohort study. Case control studies, the risk factors of people with the disease are compared to those without. In retrospect of cohort studies, participants are chosen on the basis of having or not having the condition. Describe an example of retrospective cohort study. The populations are identified which differ only by the fact that one group has been exposed to the condition being studied, i.e. asbestos. Outline the range of toxicity tests that might be needed to be carried out on a substance. Acute toxicity, so we've got oral, dermal, inhalation, irritancy, skin sensitization, repeated dose, 28 days, subchronic, repeated dose, 90 days, Mutagenicity, carcinogenicity, reproductive toxicity. Okay. Explain the methodology and purpose of fixed dose toxicity. It measures the effects, short time, 14 day exposure. The dose is successively increased and the effects measured. Describe a test that can be used to identify genetic mutation. 
The AMES test exposes the mutagen to a specific bacterial strain. Explain what is meant by dose-response relationship, the correlation between the amount exposed to with the severity of the associated effects. Okay, sketch a dose-response curve. Explain LD50, LC90. So it's S-shaped curved. Y-axis is death, X-axis is dose. LD is the oral or the dermal dose. LC is the inhaled concentration. LD50 means 50% are killed at that dosage. LC90 means 90% of the sampling dies at that concentration dosage. Unit 3, Control of Hazardous Substances. Outline the hierarchy of controls for exposure to hazardous substances as outlined in the ILO ambient factors. So eliminate, firstly, cease use, substitute for less hazardous alternatives, alternative processes. Secondly, control, good design and installation, work systems to minimize exposure, PPE, good hygiene practices, welfare facilities, warning signs, emergency arrangements. What are further measures to control exposure to carcinogens or mutagens? Totally enclosing the process and handling systems if uh, reasonably applicable. Prohibition of eating and drinking in contaminated areas. Good housekeeping. Designated areas and installations that may be contaminated using signs. Storage, handling, disposing, containing safely. Training, instruction, supervision, health and surveillance. Outline the diseases associated with asbestos exposure. Lung cancer, asbestos, pleural thickening. Mesothelioma. Explain what is meant by dilution, ventilation, and comment on its value as a measure of control. It dilutes the concentration of the air either passively or actively with fans. Only good for a low concentration of high OEL contaminant. Not suitable when operators are in close contaminant contact with the contaminant. Explain why it is important to monitor performance of LEVs. Ensure they are working to spec. In turn, contamination is within OELs. No needless exposure. Describe how a manometer might be used to monitor the pressure drop across a filter and LEV system. It can indicate reduced efficiency from a filter that can be cleaned or changed. What should be included in a LEV exam test? Name and address of the employer responsible, identification, location of plant, processes and substances involved, date of last test, info showing intended performance, current performance, repairs required, methods used for testing, visual pressure, airflow, dust lamp sampling and filter integrity test as standard, date of exam, name and role of tester with signature, date of repairs and retest, next test due date. When choosing PPE for the workforce, what factors should be considered? It is appropriate for risks and conditions. It takes account of ergonomic considerations. It fits. It does not increase risks. It meets standards. Nine, what is meant by compatibility? Where one or more piece is required, effectiveness is not impinged upon. Ten, describe the difference between respirators and BA breathing apparatus. Respirators purify air from immediate surroundings. Breathing apparatus supplies air from uncontaminated source. Identify the advantages of powered clean air respirator over a conventional canister respirator. Pump attached to a powered respirator provides positive air pressure. Reducing fatigue allows for longer work periods, minimizing risk of ingress contaminants. What factors would you consider choosing for eye protection? The hazard, the environmental conditions, the tasks, ergonomic requirements, compliance, compatibility, acceptability. Identify three issues associated with wearing protective gloves. Loss of dexterity and feeling, overheating and sweating leading to dermatitis and open pores, possible removal of gloves. Breakthrough time, permeation rate, degradation rate. B4. What specific forms of hazardous substances are OEL intended for? Occupational exposure limit to control exposures to airborne inhalation of hazardous substances. Outline the difference between LTEL and STEL. Long-term exposure limits are measured over 8 hours, 
for chronic effects. STEL are measured over 15 minutes to control acute effects. Both are time-weighted averages. C1, T1 plus C2 plus T2 over 8 parts per million. State the four stages of practice of occupational hygiene, identification, monitoring, evaluation, control. Outline the monitoring strategy described in HSG 173. Initial as appraisal to establish need for and extent of exposure monitoring, information gathering and simple qualitative tests, basic survey, detailed survey, monitoring, evaluation, control, review. Describe the gravimetric method for analysing of inhalable dust. The sampling train consists of an air pump, connecting hose and sampler. State the limitations of stain tubes as a method for quantifying airborne contaminant. Incorrectly broken, bellows action, cross sensitive, inaccurate at non-standard temps and pressure, shelf life, margin of error, point in time, grab sample, user competence. Okay, what is the minimum requirements for health surveillance and keeping of health records? Health records created for all employees potentially exposed to a specific hazard. Name, sex, DOB, ID, address, date started, job, record of jobs involving exposure. What is the difference between health record and medical record? Health record is not confidential, it's based on health surveillance results. Medical record contains clinical information and confidential requires authorization. What does the term biological monitoring mean? A measure of a biological substance in a fluid, blood, breath, urine samples. Unit 5, biological agents. How does the ILO define a biological agent? Any microorganism, cell culture or human endoparasite that may cause hazard to human health. What are the four characteristic categories of microorganism? Fungi, bacteria, viruses, protozoa, parasites. What are the symptoms of Weill's disease, leptospirosis? Flu symptoms for a week, jaundice for a week two, second week's a fever with jaundice, comes from cows and rats. Explain the term zoonosis and describe an occupational example. Animal infections that may be transmitted to humans, agriculture workers, wet food markets. Identify two occupational groups at risk from exposure to biological hazards and summarize the ill health conditions that could arise. Agricultural workers, workers and sewage workers exposed to raw sewage, hepatitis and polio, leptospirosis. So assessment of the risk, monitoring and evaluation, prevention or control of the exposure. List of four criteria to classify a biological agent into one of four hazardous groups. Ability to cause human diseases, possible hazard to workers, types of transmission, likelihood of spread of disease in community, availability of protection and treatment. Which type of biological safety cabinet would be appropriate for work with level three and risk group four organisms? Class three microbiological safety cabinet, totally enclosed, leak proof gloves port, air is drawn in and extracted through filters, noise and vibration, how does the ILO define noise? All sound that can result in hearing impairment or be harmful to health or otherwise dangerous. Explain the term amplitude and frequency. Amplitude is the maximum displacement of sound wave pressure. Frequency, the number of cycles per second that pass a given location. Study question three, explain the term pitch. Pitch, how the brain intercepts sound. High, shrill, piercing, low, drone, rumble. What is the a weighted scale and its purpose, a reading on a meter that mimics the sound wave pressure on the human ear, giving a good indication on harm caused by hearing. Why can decibel levels not be added together? Because sound waves are given in a logarithmic scale. Describe how the ear converts sound waves into nerve stimulation to the audio centers of the brain. The ear transmits nerve impulses to the brain as a result of the detection and transmitting vibration through the outer ear, then the middle ear into the outer ear. Inner ear, it should be. Explain how the damaging effects of noise are related to the dose the ear receives. The dose of noise the ear receives depends on the level of the noise and the duration of exposure. 
short-term exposure to a high level of noise is comparable to a long-term exposure of a low level of noise. Conductive and sensorineural hearing loss. Conductive hair cells in the cochlea are damaged mainly from excessive noise. Sensorineural, so it's instantaneous noise like an explosion. Explain threshold shift. Threshold shift is a reduction of a person's ability to hear, i.e. they need sound intensity stimulation to be able to hear and their previous level. Identify three factors that can affect the accuracy of audiometric testing. So it's technical limitations, the learning effect of the participant headphone fit, participant honesty. What is the main types of equipment used for measuring noise levels and exposure? Simple noise meters, integrated sound level meters, dosimeters, personal sound meters, octave band analyzers. Next question, what are the three ways sound wave may act in a material reflection, absorption, transmission? List three priorities of noise control. Noise reduction at source, attenuation at transmission, control at the receiver. Describe the basic features of an acoustic enclosure. Airtight, mounted as not to transmit vibrations, heavy noise reflecting outer and noise absorbing inner. Appropriate hatches, doors, suitably ventilated, lit and windows and panels. What is the difference between a noise enclosure and noise haven? Noise enclosure encloses the noise at source. Noise haven encloses and controls the noise away from the receiver. What are the various types of ear protection? So we've got earplugs, disposal, terrible made, earmuffs, active noise cancellation technology, and they're all level dependent. What is meant by a vibration dose? So it's the magnitude of the vibration, duration of the exposure. So daily dose rate of vibration can be expressed as eight hours energy equivalent of vibration magnitude. List a range of work activities associated with halves. So that's back pain, stress, fatigue, okay? So percursive metal work tools, percursive hammers and drills, rotary tools and grinders and chainsaws, okay? So that's vibrations. Which workers might be exposed to whole body vibrations? Okay, so it's back pain, again, stress, fatigue, drivers of heavy vehicles, users of heavy plant and machineries, vehicles over rough terrain. Describe the range of effects vibration may cause in the body. Halves, hand arb vibrations, so it's nerves, muscles, circulatory system damage. WBV, whole body vibrations, affects principally back pain, fatigue, neurological damage, numbness, blanching of the fingers. VWF, vibration induced white finger. Describe white finger, early stages, slight numbness and tingling. Tips experience blanching, moves further up. Fingers are white, then become flush red and throb. Reduce sensitivity to heat, pressure and pain. Less manipulative ability. Outline a strategy to implement risk assessments for halves. Identify areas with potential hand arm vibration risk and who might be affected. Consider the tools, processes and current controls, manufacturers instructions, compliance and standards. If risk is present, use certified competent person to measure levels and evaluate compared to safe levels and targets. Okay, look at existing controls. So again, eliminate at source, attenuation at transmission, control at receiver, health surveillance and review. Three message for estimating daily exposure to hand arm vibration systems. So it's use equipment for single and multiple exposures. Use vibration calculator on HSC website. Ready Reckoner and national industry standards and best practices. Look at manufacturer's guidelines. Next one, let's see. Study questions, so it says number 24. Discuss the control options available to reduce risks from hand arm vibration system. So elimination at source, substitute for alternative tools or tasks, specific purchasing prioritization strategies, alternative working methods, limiting durations and magnitude, ergonomically designed equipment, proper maintenance and calibration, health surveillance, PPE, housekeeping, reduce at source, attenuation, transmission, control at receiver, radiation. Stress the two main categories of non-iodizing radiation. So it's optical radiation, 
so three, ultraviolet, visible and infrared, then electromagnetic fields, radio waves and microwaves. Suggest five broad regions of the electromagnetic spectrum that can be used to classify non-ionizing radiation. Ultraviolet, visible, infrared, microwaves, radio waves. What is the source of beta radiation and what is it used for? Beta radiation results in the decay of certain radioactive materials as used in biological and medical research. What is the difference between gamma radiation and x-rays? Gamma radiation comes from the nucleus. X-rays come from the surrounding external, external layers. Electron layers. What are the hazards of exposure to ultraviolet radiation? So there's acute and chronic effects. So the eyes and skin, such as sunburn, eye arc, cataracts, premature aging, and cancers. Describe the framework approach to control exposure of non-ionizing radiation. Eliminate as far as reasonably possible, substitute alternative technologies and processes, administrative controls for shifts in teams limiting exposure, duration, purchasing priority strategies, interlocks, shielding, enclosures and screens, systems of work and PPE, training, information, supervision, instruction, maintenance, design and layouts, time distance, signs, manufacturing instructions, compliance with standards, um, automation mechanization. Explain half-life, the time it takes for half the quality, quantity to degrade, activity, the rate given by which it decays, absorbed dose, measure of energy deposited by radiation, equivalent dose gives a measure of the likely biological damage. Stochastic, those effects that can occur after any level of exposure, non-stochastic effects are dose dependent. For each type of ionizing radiation, give an example of its usage. Gamma, industrial x-rays, x-ray, medical radiography, neutrons, nuclear industry, alpha, smoke detectors, beta, medical research. What are the principal instruments to detect and quantify radiation? TLD, dosimeters, thermal, luminescent dosimeter. What is the difference between external and internal exposure? External will affect the skin, eyes and internal organs. Internal deposited inside the body through ingestion, inhalation, injection or absorption through the skin. Principles of radiation protection, so it's time, duration, distance, shielding, contamination, attenuation, absorption through lead, paraffin for neutrons. Dose equals level times time. Control measures to protect harmful exposure to laser radiation. It's engineering controls like interlocks and equipment, screens, enclosures, non-reflective surfaces. Administrative controls, warning lights, signage, training, supervision, instruction, systems of work, shifts, health surveillance, supplier guidelines, accredited, PPE, laser safe, eye protectors, skin protectors, compliance. Mental health at work. What are the short-term symptoms that might arise in staff who are suffering high stress levels? Increased heart rate, palpitations, profuse sweating, headaches, dizziness, blurred vision, lethargy, skin rashes, aching neck, shoulders, hyperalertness, anxiety, depression. What organisational factors could be responsible for creating avoidable work stress? How work is organised, awkward shift patterns, unsociable hours, excessive work hours, little breaks, disruption, change, lack of control, lack of recognition or support, lack of leadership direction, poor communication, poor facilities and environment, poor cultural suits, relationships, control, change, demands, environment. Okay, define anxiety and depression. Anxiety, feeling of unease, worry or fear, uncertainty, mild or severe. Depression, the feeling of worthlessness, hopelessness, sadness, dis despair and inadequacy. What are the headings of the HSE management standards? So it's demands, role, relationships, control, support and change. Discuss examples of good practice to manage stress in periods of change, fair treatment of staff, management openness and transparency, open communication, training, inclusion and collaboration, adequate resources, monitoring and counselling. List measures to improve work relationships. So develop a written policy for unacceptable behavior and disciplinary codes to communicate to staff. 
Implement procedures to resolve conflicts, good workplace initiatives and team building, select the right blend of people, training and mentoring, counselling, information and supervision, celebrate success, explain what is meant by violence at work, an incident in which a person is abused, threatened or assaulted in circumstances related to work. Outline the principal activities and examples of associated staff where it is possible there might be a risk of workplace violence. Handling money, cashiers, working with the public, nurses and teachers, carrying out inspections or enforcement, traffic wardens, working with potentially violent people, mental health workers. Potential for a problem, decide on action, take action, review. Organisational, physical or behavioural controls. Outline the principal elements of a strategy for management of violence at work. Find out if there's a problem, decide what action needs to be taken, take action, check what you have done. State the range of measures used to combat violence at work. So it's organisational, physical, behavioural. So you've got to eliminate the risk, cash, change or substitute the job or task, change the layout or redesign counters, vet clients, use personal alarms, buzzers, use protective screens, CCTV. Musculoskeletal injuries. What are WRULD and how do they occur? Work-related upper limb disorders. Repetitive movements, reaching, twisting, gripping, lifting, posture, related to force and frequency. What are the main types of assistant injuries associated with manual handling, back injuries, tendon, ligament damage, muscle strains, broken bones, cuts, burns, blisters, hernias. The task, load, activity, capability. What measures can be adduced, introduced to avoid WRULDs? So work-related upper limb disorders. Ergonomic design of tools, equipment and workplaces. Summarise requirements for display screen equipment, workstation, keyboards, chair and space. Adequate and appropriate, suitable and sufficient, unobstructed, adjustable, freedom arranged to individuals' needs. What alternatives could be suggested to the organisational for DS display screen operators tasks to reduce physical stress? Minimise exposure and durations, provide regular breaks, variation in jobs, usage of shift patterns in teams, avoid the repetition, limit overtime, purchasing priority strategies, PPE, health surveillance, instruction, supervision, signage, training. What are the characteristics of load that present a hazard in manual lifting operation? Weight, shape, dimensions, centre of gravity, material, stability, contents, distance, handles, texture, grip rigidity identify environmental hazards for manual handling special constraints on posture obstructions conditions of walking sur surfaces variations in levels heat light humidity air movements what are the primary means of minimizing the hazards of manual handling automation mechanization so it's elimination substitution task equipment workplace redesign training instruction supervision using teams. How can musculoskeletal tasks be redesigned to make them less hazards? So sequencing, minimize the number of times operations for carrying or lifting are involved. Work routines, so it's reduced repetitions, increased variation, more breaks, job sharing, own pace, teams, using teams, sharing the workload. 10, thermal environment and temperature. What are the forms of heat transfer related to a person and work environment? Radiation, evaporative cooling, conduction, convection. Define relative humidity, an expression of a ratio of water vapour in the air to the maximum concentration required to saturate. State three types of thermometer, liquid thermometer, thermocouples and resistance. <coughs> Explain the measurement difference between wet and dry bulbs. Dry bulb is protected by shielding. Wet bulb is covered by a wetted muslin sock. Define WBGT, so it's the wet bulb globe temperature. WBGT is a type of apparent temperature used to estimate the effect of temperature, humidity, wind speed, wind chill and visible and infrared radiation, usually sunlight on humans. Okay, so it's the actual. State the categories of controls for hot conditions. Circulation of passive and active air ventilation, workplace designs, Work organisation, shift patterns, breaks, teams, PPE, health surveillance, information, training, instruction, supervision, signage, and places for uh, drinking and shade. Okay, boom.